Hi guys, in today's video we're going to be going through the history of the Del Mate as a faction in RTR Imperium Serectum. This is taken from a longer interview video that I did with Jottle, one of the main historians for the mod team. So check that out in the description down below if you want all the other histories. But for now guys, make sure you like the video, make sure you subscribe, and I'll see you all in there. So here we are with the Del Mate, after we've just been speaking about pronunciation for quite quite a while. So, uh, <laughs> yes, we're on to the Del Mate, not the Dal Mete, the Del Mate. <laughs> um, and these guys are obviously bordering Issa, so I'm assuming they were pretty big rivals to Issa then in this area. Yeah, definitely. Um, like I said, with the... Oh, which section was this? Was this the... Uh, I think the Laviatai. Um, after after Poiratos, the Laviatai and King Dais, who was quite loyal to Rome, um, they revolt from the Illyrian Kingdom and just in invade around them. Mm. Um, we have them still represented. Um, and um, they were known to be quite powerful. Um, and it's in 158 BC, yeah, where where Pleuratus dies, and they immediately go on to attack Tragurion, Epetion, and Daorson. Um, so yeah, the the cities of the Assians and uh, Issa still was an ally of Rome. Mm. Um, I always like to say that Rome tries to get its foot in into an area to to have um, the the reason to intervene. Yeah. And Issa, on several occasions, was was this foot in the door in Illyria, um, because Issa, of course, was a very attractive city for trade. It knew that, so um, it was to the benefit of Issa to be allied to someone as powerful as the Romans, mm. and the Romans had a lot of benefits of being allied to Issa. Um, so yeah, and the Damate attacked um, the two colonies of Issa on the mainland. And um, the Orson, also um, a quite powerful Illyrian city-state, basically at this point, and Rome intervenes, and um, the Demate are really one of the the people Rome fights the longest against mm. in in Illyria. They, um, when you read like all the campaigns they start and finish against them, even successfully, you have like. Um, I had to check a little bit when I noted this down. Um, they have, in 155 BC, Nausicaa subdues them. In 117 BC, Metellus subdues them again. <laughs> and in 35 BC, Augustus defeats them. And in 34 BC, a year later, subdues them. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah, they're, they're, uh, in between, they also take Promona from the Liburni. In 50 BC, um, and Caesar couldn't really deal with them because he was busy with a civil war two years later, um, and um, he tries to get reinforcements for the civil war through Illyria, and the Demate uh, misinterpret this um, reinforcements and think they get pun punched now, so they just destroy the legion. <laughs> Fair and line. Caesar. And yeah, and Caesar really doesn't do anything against this because he's busy. Yeah. And so, just just ten years later, Augustus comes back in 35 BC um, to to end their shenanigans, um, seemingly because there's another war against them. <laughs> yeah. And I think 15 BC, um, if I remember co correctly. So so yeah, there are quite a lot of wars against them, and. Probably they get split up. Probably, um, but they might have been involved in the Danmato Illyrian Pannonian Revolt too. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, um, Rome had a lot of respect for them. They they end up um, calling the region just um, Dalmatia, uh, Dalmatia. Yeah. Which the coast is still called the Dalmatian coast. So this really. Um, stuck. <laughs> yeah. And um, yeah, they were they were quite warlike. Um, 
they are quite isolationist, funnily enough, um, and kind of, they're, they're kind of weird for, for, for our ancient authors, because um, the, the neighbor, their neighbors, the Liburnians, the other Illyrians, they're quite ready to trade, like, all of them are also pirates often, but, but they're mm. also all quite re ready to trade and yeah. import Greek wares and um, stuff like that. And the Dematte don't really do that. And there's a really cool article. I think it's um, called Beverages Something Something. And um, it's also about beer. <laughs> <laughs> Alcoholic Beverages and Resistance to Roman Imperialism in Dalmatia. Oh, wow. Genius article. It's about how the Dalmatians um, almost as uh, just drink beer kind of as a resistance to the wine drinking of the Romans and Greeks because they're one nice. of among the few peoples other than the Liburnians as I said who don't import Greek wares and even explicitly don't import wine mm. um, so probably this whole invasion of, of the science also falls in um, into a time where they're really forming their own identity and um really um, try to not build any connections to the Greeks and to the Romans and, and show their, their own thing because they come from, um, must have come from inland, from Damium and at the start of the 3rd century, so around starting date, they, they, they must have expanded towards the coast because um, this is around the time we get a lot of fortresses um, yeah. from them in the area. Um, there's even um, a letter by by a Roman officer, I think, to Cicero, um, who served who, um, not Cicero, but the, but this officer, the friend, um, who serves in a campaign against them, mm. and um, he says that um, there are 13, uh, thirty ancient cities in Dalmatia, and they have. At this point, annexed 60 more. Um, so coming around to 90 cities in the lands of the Dalmatians. And um, cool. also Strabo has a lot, lot to say about um, their many regions and fortresses. So they're quite powerful. And that's this is why Rome struggles a lot with them once, once they start really coming to the scene and um, invading their neighbors. Awesome. So yeah, these these guys like tended to seems like tended to expand a bit, get subdued by someone, and then rebel, free themselves, and then you know a next generation, same thing would happen. Then next generation, same thing would happen. So they're clearly a very hardy and resistant people, I guess, and obviously were strong enough to uh, fight wars against the Romans, which not everyone was at this time. So. Um, yeah, like m most who try to fight wars against the Romans get like taken out in, in a single war, es especially yeah. a single tribe or something. But um, they must have been quite a powerful confederation because, um, I mean, for, from when they first entered the scene in 158 BC, um, the scene from the view of the Romans in 158 yeah. BC, and they just get subdued in like 30 BC. Or maybe even a bit later. Mm. Um, so roughly 120, 130, 150 years <laughs> yeah. fighting against the Romans in wow. recent war. So um, this is quite quite impressive. Yeah. Um, yeah, and they're also very interesting in, in their culture because um, Strabo notes that they redistribute their land every seven years mm. um, to their population. So that. Um, probably so no noble rivalries um, can um, can take hold. Um, must have been probably an old tradition um, from their formative years, but um, yeah, there's something notable about them that um, that they kind of try to um, get equal land um, for their probably for their major families or clans. So um, there isn't any rivalry or, or envy. Yeah, there's no uh, backstabbing going on. 
unlike every other <laughs> every other <laughs> every other society at the time. <laughs> um, no, that's cool. That's really cool. Um, in terms of their units, then I think they have a unique unit at the minute. Obviously, like I said earlier, guys, there's going to be some more units added into some of these rosters as well. So they get the Dalmatian Footman over here which are a yeah. foot unit. Um, and with... they should get... Oh, yeah. Sorry, Sorry. go on. Um, and they should get another reform unit, but uh, I yeah. want to let you speak. <laughs> and they've got, like, a, a little tiny sword here <laughs> ready to uh, ready to chop up the enemy, I guess. Pretty cool. I yeah. like the look at those guys. Yeah, um, they're... The Illyrians were known for their curved swords. I mm. mentioned one Illyrian knife um, for so Pyrus. Um, it, it, with Pyrus, right? And um, yeah, the Romans called it Sika because the Romans just called mm. knives Sika. Yeah. Um, and the Illyrian knives, they had a variety of them, but they were quite short and um, bent um, or curved. Yeah. And um, yeah, they, they were. Um, they're probably one of the main melee weapons in in, um, in Illyria um, in different shapes um, depending on on the specific culture. Yeah. But yeah. Um, so it, it sometimes looks a bit weird that it's so short, but I mean the Romans also use short swords. So. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Cool. So I think uh, we'll move on to probably the Iapodes next then. Let's well, there go. we go, guys. Thank you very much for watching the video. Of course, you can check out the longer video down in the description below. Make sure you do like and subscribe, and I'll see you all again on the next video.